As a result, Escobar amassed a vast fortune, becoming one of the wealthiest people in the world at the time, with a net worth rumored to be upward of $30 billion. Hello, what's the crack? What's the story? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're checking out Delta Force killed Pablo Escobar. I know obviously it was the Americans that killed Pablo Escobar, but I don't know what team did. It looked like it was Delta Force, and this channel is sick. Let's go. Thursday, December 2nd, 1993. Chaos erupts in the streets of Colombia as the once powerful Medellin cartel self-destructs, sending its leader, Pablo Escobar, into hiding. And out of all the stories told of the infamous manhunt and dramatic shootout between Pablo Escobar and the Colombian police, few have mentioned the roles of the CIA, Navy SEALs, Army Special Forces, and Delta Force operators who are rumored to have taken him out. In 1975, Colombian native Pablo Escobar quickly rose to power as one of the most notorious drug kingpins the world has ever seen. He and his Colombian-based Medellin cartel were single-handedly responsible for the most dominant era within the ongoing drug war declared by then-President Nixon. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. The Medellin cartel manufactured and distributed narcotics to the ports of Miami using sophisticated smuggling routes along Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador, utilizing Cessna aircrafts, go-fast boats, and narco submarines, absolutely overwhelming the authorities. Wait, they use submarines as well? I never knew they used submarines. That's sick. That's next level. What? In South Florida. North of Miami, a police sting operation with crack cocaine the target. The police watched the crack buys being made, then moved in quickly for the arrest. And through domination within the U.S. market, Escobar began to export as much as 80 tons per week into Miami, earning an estimated $420 million per week. As a result, Escobar amassed a vast fortune, becoming one of the wealthiest people in the world at the time, with a net worth rumored to be upward of $30 billion. And by 1980, he would come to own more than 800 homes and villas, and most notably, his 7,000-acre estate, equipped with a bullfighting arena and a private zoo, which housed his four beautiful Sicario hippos that he fed with dead people. By 1982, as part of the liberal alternative movement, Pablo Escobar was elected as alternate member of the Chamber of Representatives in the Colombian parliamentary election. But despite gaining popularity among the locals, Escobar's political aspirations were derailed by the Colombian and U.S. governments who sought to bring him to justice. And in turn, Escobar became ultra-violent. As in 1989, Escobar was able to exert significant control over Colombian politics and society, using his power to bribe officials, intimidate rivals with his personal and private army, and perpetrate acts of violence against those who stood in his way through the use of his loyal Sicarios and calculated narco-terror attacks, beginning with the mid-air bombing of Avianca Flight 203 what? over the city of Suacha and the administrative... De I never knew he bombed a flight. This guy did a lot of crazy stuff. I never knew that. That's mad. Department of Security Headquarters bombing in tandem with a series of car bombings, taking the lives of hundreds of innocent civilians, officially dubbing Pablo Escobar the world's very first narco-terrorist. His violent messages included a series of massacres and the murders of police officers, judges, rival cartel members, and prominent politicians, effectively making Colombia the murder capital of the world in Miami, the narco capital of the United States, drawing the attention of the Department of Defense and President George H.W. Bush. President George Bush addresses and by 1990, Colombian president-elect Cesar Gavarria declared war on Pablo Escobar, making his capture his administration's number one priority. And after a series of tense negotiations, Escobar eventually surrendered in exchange for a reduced sentence and preferential treatment during his captivity. And he officially surrendered to the Colombian authorities in June of 1991. But by July of 1992, Escobar escaped prison and reclaimed the mantle 
of the Medellin cartel. Word of his escape reached Washington, and an influx of drug trafficking sent the authorities in Miami into a frenzy. And facing mounting pressure to shut down Escobar once and for all, and make an example of him, the United States wasted zero time. Special Operations Command South executed a multitude of capture-kill operations in Colombia. However, the JSOC unit's missions failed repeatedly. But the heat on Escobar alone pushed him to flee Colombia altogether and hide out in Bolivia. At the request of the CIA and personnel of a U.S. Embassy within Bolivia, a team of Bolivian Lepardos, along with American advisors from the DEA, Navy SEALs, and 7th Special Forces Group, orchestrated a swift raid on a remote Bolivian ranch to capture or kill Pablo Escobar. DEA Special Agent Larry Leveron and Navy SEAL Herschel Davis flew with their respective teams accompanied by Bolivian police in a cluster of Hueys to execute Operation Snowcap and take down the ranch. During their approach, they observed a small Cessna aircraft taking off from a nearby airstrip. And as the teams landed and made entry into the ranch, they realized it was Escobar on the plane after only finding a warm cup of coffee within the ranch. And although the operation was a bust, Escobar was now forced to return to Colombia. And by this point, the Medellin cartel was largely dissolved, leaving Escobar with nothing more than one remaining bodyguard and little to no money. This intelligence warranted the CIA to activate a team of Delta Force operators within Colombia and take full advantage of Escobar's desperation. The op was approved by the White House, and General Bill Garrison contacted Delta, tasking the men with training a Colombian Special Operations Police Unit, known as the Search Block. Delta's involvement was largely covert, with the meat of the operation being massed beneath the Colombian umbrella. Their number one priority was to secure and orchestrate a Colombian police victory. And working in tandem with Delta Force, under the operational codename Center Spike, the U.S. Army Secretive Spy Unit, the ISA, operated technological elements. To this is so intense. It's so I'm so zoomed into this. <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm, I'm reacting. I feel like I'm just watching some random stuff. This is so intense. To track down Escobar, and through their mastery of tactical SIGINTS, the ISA quickly intercepted and scanned thousands of radio and telephone transmissions over the Medellin Valley. And it wasn't long until they picked up a transmission bearing the voice of Pablo Escobar. The ISA SIGINT teams relayed the signal's coordinates to the Delta Force teams on the ground. After performing recon surveillance, Delta snipers overlooking the building in question, along with the Colombian search block, confirmed visual contact on Escobar, observing him on the second floor of a Medellin safe house conversing on the phone. At Tola Maida Army Base, a Delta Force team leader quickly scrambled his men and activated the search block personnel. Upon arrival, the assault teams approached the perimeter of the safe house. Escobar's bodyguard witnessed the incoming search block, and the two men immediately fled up a stairwell and began exchanging dozens of rounds with Colombian police. Escobar reached the roof and attempted to escape across a neighboring rooftop. While running on the roof, Escobar opened fire on the incoming search block with his P226. The search block returned fire, wounding Escobar in the process and fatally wounding his bodyguard. And while attempting to limp across the roof, one surgical round found its way through Pablo Escobar's right ear, dropping him dead. Dozens of DEA agents, including Special Agents Steve Murphy and Javier Peña, and hundreds of search block officers, swarmed the rooftop and surrounded the lifeless body of the once notorious Pablo Escobar and proned out on an observational post. With their sights among the rooftop, laid a team of Delta Force snipers. Pablo 
Escobar was killed today, 16 months after his escape from prison. He died in a rooftop shootout with police at a home in Medellin, the base for his global trafficking network. The killing of Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar is sending a tougher message, at least that is the hope of Colombian and U.S. officials. Mr. Escobar was gunned down yesterday, and Colombian authorities say its message to other drug lords is to surrender or you will be killed. Given the secrecy of the mission and orders to secure a Colombian victory, it's not far-fetched to believe Delta took the shot that took out Escobar. And rumors have persisted, even in journalist Mark Bowden's book, Killing Pablo, suggesting that it was in fact a Delta Force sniper who shot Escobar. And whispers among the Delta community echo these claims, among many other high-profile capture-kill missions all around the world. Yeah, like I don't want to be one of them conspiracy uh, people, whatever. Cause like I can just tell it's not because they make it look like when there was a shootout, but like there too they plan stuff out. You know what I mean? I don't see them facing them in a one on one. I can just see them taking them out from a, from a far away. I could be wrong. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you, what you think happened. But it's such a mad story. This happened almost thirty years ago, and it's still crazy. This guy is still. People still talk about him to today. It's crazy. It did an absolute madness. It did a lot of crazy stuff. It's mad. But yeah, hope you guys like that. If you like that, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.